This is the Lost Media Iceberg. This iceberg has over 150 entries and was made by Equerip on Reddit. You already know what Lost Media and Iceberg charts are. Just two things like usual. If I can't find any tangible information on an entry, I'll avoid discussing it unless I can come up with a hypothesis on what it could be about. And do expect some more disturbing content on this iceberg, especially as we get to the lower tiers. Alright, let's get started. Cigarettes and Valentines Kicking things off, we have Cigarettes and Valentines, a partially lost album by a popular American band Green Day. This album was going to have a release in 2003, following up their prior album, Warning, when the master tapes of the album were mysteriously stolen from the band's studio as it was nearing completion. Although an attempt was made to re-record the album, it was ultimately decided by the band to start over from scratch to create a new album, this one being American Idiot. While rough mixes of the album were subsequently recovered in 2016, the members of the band have stated that they have no real ambitions to release them, stating that they'd rather push forward to the future rather than linger on the past. Even though you could just upload mp3s of the tapes on like a google drive, it's that easy. Right now though, only two of the five known songs are available online, and even one is only partially found. Jeff the Killer Unedited Photo Jeff the Killer is known as one of the most infamous, and recently, worst creepypastas of all time. Without dissing how stinky the story itself is, it's most well known for the image accompanying it. What's weird is that the original unedited image is currently lost. For a long time, it was thought that a girl on 4chan named Kitty Robinson posted a photo of herself and that was where the original image came from but that was later debunked and Katie Robinson has nothing to do with the image. Without laying out the details, because trust me there's a lot, the current unedited photo still remains lost, but endeavors to find it are still strong, even after all the time that the search has gone on for. Doctor Who Lost Episodes Doctor Who is a famous British science fiction series that ran from 1967 to 1989. Throughout the series' lifespan, mainly during the first six years of it, the BBC had a habit of wiping tapes of the episodes for reuse since archival stuff wasn't really a thing back then. When home media became popular though, the BBC began to properly archive episodes, but there was still a lot of damage done as a total of 97 episodes are currently still lost today. And that's not even counting the ones that were initially lost and were later found. Regardless. Doctor Who remains as one of the most famous cases of lost media. Library of Alexandria The Library of Alexandria, built in Alexandria, Egypt, is considered as one of the largest and most significant libraries in the ancient world. Well, it was. The library was supposedly said to hold over half a million different documents before it abruptly became lost. How and why it became lost isn't known, even to this day, but the most popular belief was that the library was burned down, with the first suspect being that of Julius Caesar, who probably burned at least part of the library down. But of course, the library is completely gone, so what concretely happened to the rest of it is anyone's guess. We'll probably never know though, I mean, it was over 2000 years ago, so I'm not really expecting anyone today to figure it out. It would be pretty cool though. Michael Jackson's Vault I hopefully shouldn't have to explain who Michael Jackson is. He's considered as one of the most important pop culture figures in the 20th century. However, when Michael Jackson passed away in 2009, it was eventually discovered that there was a mass amount of unreleased music laying on the musician's hard drive. And I mean it when I say mass amount, cause there's over 50,000 different tracks on that thing though much of it are likely just one-off demos and tests, along with all sorts of miscellaneous sort of stuff. Still, that's an obscene number. Some of these tracks have been released officially, while others were leaked throughout the years. However, even of the tracks that are known to the public, most still remain lost today. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, The Phantom Ghost This is actually a typo, Andrew's supposed to say Phantom Blood, not Phantom Ghost. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is a popular anime that is currently ongoing to this day. In spite of its popularity, a movie named Phantom Blood tying into the series was made, apparently only ever screened in select Japanese theaters. After that, it was never seen again. The reason for the film's lost status isn't entirely known. 
though it's speculated to be for a few reasons, including copyright, poor reception, and the movie's producer losing the license of the JoJo IP over a controversy. Since then, only about 16 minutes of the film, without dialogue, has been made available online. Minecraft Lost Versions Throughout Minecraft's lifespan, it has accumulated a plethora of lost builds. Almost all of these came from a time period where the game wasn't as popular as it is today, and the game frequently being updated, sometimes not even a day apart. Although lost builds are still getting uncovered today, many of them still remain lost media. You can find some ridiculously early builds of the game on the lost media wiki though. Hidogata This is the name given to a supposed Japanese PSA that aired sometime in the early 90s or 2000s. The commercial contained two white figures that continuously blinked, with text appearing near the end of the commercial saying something like, Every two seconds, a person dies. This has generally been seen to be an advertisement or PSA promoting railroad safety, since the sound of a railroad can be heard in the ad. This commercial has only recently been made publicly aware, and although it's still lost right now, many recreations exist online. Unfortunately, there is no evidence of this commercial existing, so it technically falls under the existence unconfirmed tag in spite of the large amount of people recalling it. Christine Chapuk's Suicide On the morning of July 15, 1974, a news reporter by the name of Christine Chapuk brought a revolver to her workplace and committed suicide on live television. The reason for this was because of her extended history of depression, which was only amplified by a recent operation that hindered her chances of having a child. Her suicide was captured on film, and recordings of the event do exist, which were later given to a large law firm in 2016 to ensure that the footage never became lost. However, it's unlikely the footage will ever be released publicly. In spite of that, audio of the incident does exist and can be heard online if you search for it. El Apostol El Apostol is noteworthy for being the first feature animated film ever, clocking in at 70 minutes. Now, obviously, that isn't anything special today, but back in 1917, when this film came out, that was a big freaking deal. The film itself was a political satire on the then Argentine president. Despite its success, the last known copies of the film were destroyed in a fire, and only a poster and some character designs were left. The rest of the film is likely gone for good. Grand Theft Auto V Single Player DLC At some point, Rockstar Games, the company who developed Grand Theft Auto V, announced that there would be DLC for the single player mode for the game. However, GTA V fans waited, and the DLC never came out. What happened? Well, basically the DLC was cancelled. Silently cancelled, and not helping was conflicting reports regarding the DLC by several companies. People ultimately found out the DLC just wasn't going to happen when DLC for the game's online mode came out and files that were for the single player DLC were discovered. So while single player DLC was planned, it was ultimately cut, and we'll probably never see an official release. Taiwan 2001 Alright, let's just make this one short. Taiwan 2001 is a PC game made between the 2000s and 2010s heavily based off of Hong Kong 97, which is universally known as one of the worst games ever. But Taiwan 2001 was supposedly even worse than that, which is just fun, isn't it? The game was very similar to Hong Kong 97, and a build of it was downloadable online at one point, but is now lost. And I don't think this is a hot take, but we are not really missing out on much with this one. Yeah Yeah Beebus 1 yeah Yeah Beebus 1 is the name given to a strange game seen in some gaming magazines from June of 1989 to January of 1990. Aside from that, no other mentions of the game's existence is seen anywhere else. While many theories about this game exist, the most popular one, and one that I believe personally, is that the game was a copyright trap, used to catch any magazines stealing the lists of games that were featured in said magazines which held the name of the strange game. While this is likely the case, there is no proof that this is the reason for the game's name being listed on these magazines, so we'll probably never figure out what's up with this game. Imagine Dragons Wish You Well Imagine Dragons is a popular band that generally has no lost media. Pretty much all of their earlier stuff has been archived, one way or another, except for a song called I Wish You Well. Now, while you can technically listen to this song on YouTube, 
It's a recording in a concert where the audio and video quality is really poopy, so you can't really listen to the song in high quality. However, a high quality version of the song does exist, but only about 50 seconds of the HQ version are up on YouTube, with the rest currently being lost. So, as of right now, Imagine Dragons fans are stuck listening to the Smelly Concert version on YouTube if they wish to listen to it in full. 1890 Census the 1890 census is the details of various events and conditions around the United States, with a US census being held every 10 years. However, the 1890 census was mostly taken out in a fire in 1921, rendering most of it as lost. While some details of the census survived, like statuses of the population and statistical information, among a few other things, most of the census is forever lost to time. Epic Cycle Books the Epic Cycle books are a series of epic ancient Greek poems with two specific novels sometimes being attributed to the series being both the Odyssey and the Iliad by Homer, both titles you've probably heard of before. While both of those books are preserved, the rest of the Epic Cycle books are almost completely lost, with a few small snippets of the books all that are remaining of the series. Twitch Plays Pokemon Early Streams Twitch Plays Pokemon is a popular series of live streams on Twitch, in which the streams involve a game of Pokemon on some console being played, with viewers in the chat typing out specific phrases to make the game utilize certain inputs, with the goal of the stream being to finish the game under these conditions. While the series has primarily been recorded and preserved, the first day and a half of this first stream ever is largely lost. Some clips and images of the first stream have since been rediscovered thanks to various search efforts, but it's highly unlikely the entire first stream will ever be fully recovered. London After Midnight One of the most sought after pieces of lost media, London After Midnight is a lost 1927 horror movie starring Lon Chaney. The film was met with moderate success, being generally available until the last known copies of the movie were destroyed in the 1965 MGM Vault Fire. Since then, London After Midnight has not been seen, with only some stills and posters being its only remaining material of the film. However, using a full script of the movie, a reconstruction was made in 2002, which used the aforementioned stills to recreate as much of the film as possible. Ultimately though, no footage of the movie has been found as of yet. Food Fight, the original version. Food Fight is known as one of the worst animated films of all time, and deservingly so. The film has PS2 graphics, even though it was released in 2012, and it just sucks in general. However, what if I told you the film could have looked passable and been released nearly a decade earlier? After the release of the film, an early trailer for it was rediscovered, showing the movie in a much cleaner looking state. Supposedly, the film's creator stated that the copies containing all of the film's progress had been stolen, forcing production to start over from scratch. However, it's since been discovered that all of the progress of this early version of the movie, which was roughly 60% of the whole film by the way, was deleted by the creator himself. Development hell ensued, and we got the food fight we all despise today. While very little footage has since been rediscovered online, the likelihood of seeing the entirety of the early version of the film is next to nothing. Zombie Nicktoons Bumpers In 2011, Nicktoons aired a series of bumpers which featured a variety of Nickelodeon characters in zombie-like states and degradations. All of these bumpers were lost for over a decade until 2022, when they were all found from users on the Lost Media Wiki Discord. It was even speculated that a SpongeBob bumper existed at one point, however, we now know that it doesn't. All the bumpers are now available to watch on YouTube. RZA Lost Songs Wu Tang Clan is an American hip hop group, having begun in 1992 and is still ongoing to this day. One of the group's members, RZA, kept somewhere around 300 to 500 beats in his basement when a flood unexpectedly arrived and washed away all of them. This included hundreds of Wu-Tang Clan beats and two albums. Considering all the tracks were washed away by a flood and subsequently destroyed, it's nigh impossible that any of the lost beats can be recovered. Playboy TV Hijack 
On September 6, 1987, the Playboy television channel was hijacked by a member of the Christian Broadcasting Network, Thomas Haney. And yes, I'm referring to that Playboy channel. Why did Mr. Thomas Haney decide to hijack the Playboy channel of all things? Well, I think the hijack's details speak for itself, as the intrusion consisted of only a single message on the screen, saying, Thus saith the Lord thy God, Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Considering this was the fucking Playboy channel, nobody really cared for the hijacking. While Thomas Haney was actually subsequently caught for the hijacking, a very rare instance in the realm of TV hijackings, the actual broadcast is lost, though an image of the hijacking with the message has since been uncovered, and considering that this was all the intrusion really was, there isn't really a high demand to find footage of it. Paper Mario Sticker Star 2010 E3 Trailer Paper Mario Sticker Star is the fourth installment in the Paper Mario series. It's not a particularly well-liked game by Paper Mario enthusiasts, but a 2010 E3 trailer showcased an earlier build of the game, more in resemblance to the style of older Paper Mario games that fans liked much more. Sadly, only about 20 seconds of footage is actually viewable of the trailer right now, and a whole other minute is confirmed to exist. Whether or not we'll ever get to see the rest of the trailer is unknown. The only other semblance of the beta build of Sticker Star are some screenshots that are in higher quality compared to the footage of the trailer we have. That's about it though. Max Headroom Hijack Audio The Max Headroom incident is known as one of the most infamous cases of TV hijackings. Two Zebra television stations were hijacked on the night of November 22nd, 1987. While footage of both hijackings has been preserved, the audio of the first intrusion is currently lost. Whether there was any audio in the initial hijack or not is up to debate, but it's speculated that audio of the first hijacking was present but not saved. Dead End, 1985 A surreal zombie slapstick comedy film, this movie features a documentary filmmaker who goes out to investigate a UFO, which in turn causes a zombie apocalypse. In 1987, the director of the film lost his personal copy of the movie, and he had since lost contact with previous cast and crew members. Whether any cast or crew had their own personal copies of the movie is unknown, though supposedly some people claim to have unknowingly been friends with people who worked on the movie. Whatever the case, Dead End is currently a lost film. Me at the Zoo HQ version Me at the Zoo is the first ever video uploaded to YouTube. Though it's become a staple of YouTube's history, the video was intended to be in a much higher quality rather than the quality it was uploaded in, due to YouTube's at the time limitations. This caused the HQ version of the video to remain lost, which had a higher video quality and more clear audio on top of that. Doom 4 Doom 4 is a cancelled sequel based off of the Doom series of video games. It was said to release on the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and Microsoft Windows, but was cancelled in late 2011. What was done of Doom 4 eventually turned into Doom 2016. Although a few developers have the build of Doom 4 before it was altered into the Doom 2016 remake, and gameplay videos are existent online, no playable build of the game is publicly available as of yet. Among Us 2017 Prototype Y'all already know about Among Us. However, what you may not have known is before the game blew up in popularity, a 2017 prototype build was released which contained far less content, an entirely different type of gameplay, and just looked a lot different. However, it was quickly removed after its release, rendering it as lost, though some screenshots and even footage of the prototype have since resurfaced. Although I can guarantee you guys, someone probably has a build of this on their PC and just doesn't realize it's lost media, so I'm sure if enough people become aware of this, it'll probably get found. Half-Life 0.61v Half-Life is a 1998 first-person shooter game produced by Valve. In 2016, a list of patch notes for a version of the game titled version 0.61 were discovered, which was made months before the game's release. However, a version of this build of the game has not been discovered as of yet, and is not publicly available it seems. Skunk Girl Plus Maid from what little information I could gather about this entry, this appears to be an RPG Maker game that was created by a user known online as Mr. Big T. The game is now lost, and very little is known about it. 
Although some users have attempted to ask for the game to be found, it doesn't appear to be available. Also, just be warned, if you do plan to research for this game online, be prepared to see some not suitable for YouTube stuff. 1-900-490 Freak Audio From 1987 to 1995, a commercial known as the Freak Phone played on MTV Station, starring a mascot known as Freddy Freaker. A number was displayed in the commercial, which, when called, recorded you saying whatever, with many of these recordings containing stuff like raps, jokes, and weird noises. Supposedly, it was pretty popular around the time it was airing, and although the commercial has been archived and can easily be accessed on YouTube, the recordings that would play when the number on screen is called have not been released. Most of the recordings were physically recorded on tape machines, and are in storage. However, none of these recordings have been released online, though there has been somewhat of an interest in bringing the phone line's mascot back, so they may end up getting released in the future. Please don't stop. Malibu Video was an Israeli VHS distribution company that was active in the 1980s. While very little is known about this company, one thing that was discovered was the use of an English power metal synth song. Part of the song was eventually discovered on YouTube in a compilation of Israeli VHS logos. What made identifying the song difficult is that these kinds of compilations are notorious for not crediting the song that they blatantly steal from. Only recently was it actually identified what the song was, as on May 31st, 2023, it was identified that the song was used in the 1986 movie Please Don't Stop, with the author's name being Aladdin's Magic Rub. That's all we know though, but I'm sure with enough digging, this is probably one that can be found. Institute for Sexual Wissenschaft This was an early private sexology research institute located in Germany from 1919 to 1933, being translated in English as Institute of Sex Research. Notable for being the very first sexology research center in the world, research was not only extended to, into sex-related subjects, but it offered various other services to the public. However, in the 1930s, when the Nazi party gained control over Germany, the institute was destroyed, and all archives of the institute, including its research and documents, were all burned on the streets. The attack on the institute itself was premeditated, with the library's creator, Magnus Hirschfeld, having been a target from the far right in Germany since the 1920s. Very few of the books and documents of the research facility survived, with it being nearly impossible for any more to be uncovered. I solved stop and swap. This entry comes from a reddit post from r slash tip of my tongue, where the user explains about a game that featured a black screen, along with some guy talking about how he supposedly solved the stop and swap, and then goes on to explain the steps of how he did so, which includes various Nintendo 64 titles. To my knowledge, there is no other mention of the supposed video game online, and the reddit post in question got no attention whatsoever. It also doesn't really help that the rest of the results online that came up are for the stop and swap for Banjo-Tooie. It probably isn't real, I mean, the guy who made the post is a moderator of a porn subreddit, so yeah. Nico Nico Dogan Glitches Nico Nico Doga is a Japanese streaming service that is pretty much the Japanese equivalent of YouTube, with a few distinguishable differences. Within the site, there is a phenomenon that can occur where certain things glitch out, such as comments or even the video itself, and all of these occurrences that have been reported have been classified as lost media. This is a pretty stupidly dumbed down version of the phenomenon itself, and there is a lot going on with Niku Niku Doga, too much for me to cover, so head on over to Secure Stardust's video on the subject if you want to learn more in depth about this, I highly recommend it. Lego Go Lego Go is a Russian game show which utilizes Legos, of course. The show would feature two teams competing against each other in Lego construction challenges. It ran from 1995 to 1998 and is mostly lost. However, some footage exists, but given that each episode had hardly any reruns, along with the lack of any home release, finding any footage of the show was very difficult. A few episodes have been uncovered, but the rest remain lost today. Minecraft Unused Vote Winners Animation Recently, Minecraft has held certain contests or competitions in which it creates three different mobs or creatures and lets fans vote on which one should be included in the game. 
in 2021 when it was announced which mob won, an animation was shown which featured the mob that had won. This suggested that other animations for the other mobs was made for the scenario that they had won instead. However, it's very possible the animators who made the scene could have known which mob had won beforehand and simply animated the mob that had won and didn't bother with the others. Whatever the case, we won't get to see other animations for the other mobs. Piano Lessons This is a very early television series that ran from 1931 to 1932. Notable for being one of the earliest regularly scheduled television programs in history, it featured the show's host, Professor G. Aldo Randiger, who gave piano lessons on live television. Although it was prominent for being one of the first regularly scheduled TV shows, the lack of recording abilities, as well as the show's really early status in general, makes it nigh impossible for any recordings or records of the show to ever be found. Only a few newspaper articles that feature the show are the only evidence of its existence. MySpace Deleted Content MySpace, although dead nowadays, is a very well-known social media website that was massively popular in the mid-2000s. Afterwards, other sites like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter surpassed it in status, and it fell into irrelevance as time went on. However, many musicians, like Panic at the Disco, Owl City, and Adele, would release music onto the platform. There is, of course, much more than that, but the lost media comes into play when in 2018, a Reddit user allegedly received an email from MySpace's support team saying that there was an issue with all songs uploaded to the site from over three years ago. Though nobody realized it at the time, they just witnessed the loss of over 50 million songs from over 14 million different musicians. This wasn't well known until March of 2019, when an official statement from former Kickstarter CTO Andy Bio was made, saying that all songs published onto the site in the first 12 years of its lifetime were completely lost during a server migration. The exact details of the loss is unknown, though it has since been known as one of, if not, the biggest loss of music in history. Although a massive archive of nearly 500,000 mp3 files was uploaded to the Internet Archive in April of 2019, the rest of the site's music is now lost to time, with pretty much no way of ever being able to retrieve them. Edward Leon Scott de Martinville Recordings Scott was a French inventor who was known for the invention of the phonograph, the earliest device known to record sound waves. Although the device was never intended to actually play back sounds, some of these recordings have been able to be heard thanks to modern technology. Supposedly, Scott recorded many things with this device, such as ticking clocks and air currents. Though even more significantly, is allegedly Scott made a tour around the United States and managed to capture the voice of Abraham Lincoln, who recorded through the device and voiced his opinions on slavery. Though this would be a historically significant find, being the earliest known recording of English, along with the earliest known recording of a US president, predating Grover Cleveland by 40 years, its existence is unconfirmed, and many historians are skeptical of its existence. Although we don't know if this recording exists, most of the recordings that we do have are highly undecipherable, though technology is slowly getting closer to being able to make these recordings play correctly, so it's only a matter of time before many of these recordings can be heard. Mothman Doug Tenapple is most well known for being the creator of both Earthworm Jim and Cat Scratch. However, what some people may not know is that Doug Tenapple made his first and only ever live action endeavor in the form of the movie Mothman, based off of the mystical creature whose sightings were most prominent in 1966. The film features an animator who encounters the Mothman, who eventually teams up with an older man, who also claimed to have witnessed the Mothman, to find the creature, whilst being stalked by a man in black, who also seeks the Mothman but for a different purpose. The movie was never finished, though Doug had stated in 2010 that a DVD edit was close to being done, although it would only be around 20 minutes in length. However, it hasn't been released yet, and nobody is really sure if the movie ever will. As to what we do have, we have a few stills and behind the scenes photos, as well as a trailer for the film that was also uncovered. That seems to be all that we have though. I Love Bees Hurricane Ivan Incident I Love Bees is the name for an ARG set up by the developers of Halo 2, specifically for a multiplayer trailer. 
Near the end of the trailer, the screen glitches to show the URL to a website called I Love Bees, which is where the whole ARG takes place. To keep a long story short, players would have to go to specific payphones and call them in relation to the game. Though these recordings are readily available online, there is some lost media relating to the calls. Around the time the ARG had launched, Hurricane Ivan was active. In spite of that, one madman still went to a payphone near the hurricane and called the number. The operator, who was supposed to act in character, broke character at one point and said, Dude, it's a hurricane. Put the phone down. It's unknown as to if this call, along with the others made by the operators, were pre-recorded. Agent So, I couldn't find anything online that was just named Agent. Anything that was lost anyways. So, I'm gonna be talking about a lost Filipino movie called Agent Zero Zero which could be what the iceberg is referring to. This is a 1981 Filipino action movie, being the directorial debut of Eddie Nicard, and being the first starring role given to international superstar Wang Wang. A sequel to the film was made called For Your Hide Only, which went on to become one of the highest grossing Filipino movies outside of the Philippines. Although the sequel seems to be available online, Agent Zero Zero is lost, and there doesn't seem to be a known reason as to why. Right now, all that we have of this movie is a possible poster for it, and even that is debatable on if it's the real deal. And Justice for Gore, a Gore and Noise tribute to Metallica. This appears to be an album that is in tribute to the popular band Metallica. The album was initially lost, having been quickly removed from the Bandcamp page after its release. However, the full album was eventually uploaded to YouTube by user Quag is Music after being able to obtain the original CD from one of the bands that made the album. Though its exact reasoning for becoming lost is unknown, the entire album is now publicly available via YouTube. Apathy, Sacks of People Apathy is a grunge band that was formed in 2000, with their first album being Sacks of People. This, however, would prove to be their only real album, as the band's guitarist, Luke Helder, would go on a bombing spree the year after its release in 2002. While Luke Helder was subsequently caught and arrested, thankfully, this proved to be the band's only album, and Sacks of People soon became lost. However, it was eventually found and many CDs were auctioned to eBay for around $200. The entire album is seemingly found now, though only 2 out of 12 total tracks on it are available online. The rest are likely in the possession of individuals who bought the auctions on eBay, so they are technically found, but not exactly available through online means. Incel Project the Incel Project is an original documentary series that was released from 2008 to 2012. The series contained many interviews, primarily with people explaining their life as an incel, or coming out as an incel, with the majority of these interviews often exceeding 20 minutes. Production of the documentary series was put on hold somewhere around 2012 to 2014 and was eventually cancelled soon after. People speculated that the reason for which was because of an event in 2014 where a user from a forum called PUAHate.com went on a shooting spree. The forum in question was often a topic of conversation regarding the documentary. However, it said that two months before this incident, the series was removed from the channel it was airing on, Blip TV. So far, only segments of two interviews have been found, with the rest of the series lost right now. Although there have been efforts to preserve content from Blip TV before it shut down in 2015, they ultimately were in vain, and future attempts to recover any other episodes within Blip TV archives have proven futile. Deleted Video This could literally just be referring to any kind of deleted video on YouTube. Obviously, many videos are uploaded to YouTube every second, and thus, many are also deleted every second as well. There is most likely hundreds of hours of content that have been long since erased that we don't even know about, that could have been preserved. If you search through forums on the Last Media Wiki, you will probably find quite a handful of people attempting to recover any kinds of deleted YouTube videos. Super Mario 64 Secret Star The title for this one is actually supposed to be Super Mario 64 Big Star Secret. Just figured I'd point that out. 
This is a Lost Screamer video explaining how to achieve a supposed hidden star in the hit game Super Mario 64. After a thorough walkthrough, the video ends with the Screamer, the one used in this video being of a jump scare in an infamous coffee commercial. Very little of this video has been seen, with the thumbnail having been recovered and a reaction video of a kid who witnesses the video. It includes the first 8 seconds of the video and the last 20 seconds of it, which showcases the Screamer. So far, that's all we have, and it's unclear if the rest of the video will ever get uncovered. Telechat English Dub Telechat was a popular French 80s television series which featured puppets such as cats and ostriches as news broadcasters. The show, while having its original version readily available to buy, the English dub of the show is oddly missing. Season 1 at the least was dubbed in English, with no real confirmation if Season 2 was at all. To my research, very little is known about the English dub of the show and where it is now. I found very little discussion of it online, but it's possible that with enough exposure, some content could be found. L Supersonic Q Lost Videos L Supersonic Q is a notable YouTuber within the Lost Media Wiki who covers various Lost Media content and continues to upload to this day. However, before 2015, instead of talking about Lost Media, L Supersonic Q made videos on art and throughout his years of making Lost Media content, his earlier videos slowly began getting deleted, which eventually became Lost Media. However, in September of 2022, he released a compilation of all of his lost and deleted videos, which rendered them all as found. He even went on to include some previously unreleased or cancelled videos for all to watch. The entire compilation is up on his channel on YouTube. Doom Gameplay QuakeCon 2014 In 2016, Doom received a remake also called Doom, and it was one of the most successful video games of 2016. However, in 2014, a presentation of a beta version of the build was shown during a convention known as QuakeCon in Dallas, Texas. During this, roughly 20 minutes worth of footage of the game was shown. In this convention, recording or taking photos was explicitly prohibited. However, some people still managed to take very little footage, although it only accumulated to around a few seconds. From those having been present at the event, the beta version was a lot bloodier than the final version of the game, and included more death animations. Very little footage is available of this build, and it's likely that we won't get to see any more. Gogola Gogola is a 1966 monster movie made by Bollywood. No, not Hollywood. Bollywood is its own company. The movie was about the titular monster Gogola, who causes mayhem amidst the city of Mumbai. Very little is known about the movie, aside from the cast and crew. The production company behind this movie, Indra Danish Films, supposedly only ever helped produce Gogola and nothing else. So it probably wasn't a financial success, and we'll probably never get to see it. Since then, all that we have is its soundtrack, as well as a few stills. Baby Shaker This was a controversial app released on iOS, in 2008 or 2009, in which you shake your iPhone to stop a crying baby until two X's appear over their eyes. Needless to say, it didn't take long for public outrage against the app to stir up, ushering the developers to take the app off of the App Store, and deservedly so. Did I also mention that you had to purchase the app itself? Yeah. Considering the game's content and the outrage it caused, there is very little to no demand for it to become found and it should probably stay that way. Metallica The Game This is a cancelled 2005 open world shooter game which would have featured themes from the famous metal band Metallica, mainly from their 2003 album Saint Anger. While it was being made for the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and PC, no version of the game ever got finished. In 2011, Metallica themselves showcased some concept art used for the game, and even some beta gameplay has surfaced online. However, it's highly unlikely the game will ever get finished, let alone see an official release. Waluigi Toenail Clipping Party So apparently, for some reason, Nintendo decided to make a Flash game in 2000 where you clip Waluigi's toenails and catch the toenail clippings in a jar. 
Yeah, there is a whole last article on the Lost Media Wiki about it, so this probably does exist. Supposedly, it was meant to promote Mario Tennis and was discovered in a Nintendo Power magazine. However, unsurprisingly, this has been lost for a while. But, you know, now you guys know about it at least. Hope you didn't have to eat today! Fun Day Pop Pet Shop 9-11 episode The Fun Day Pop Pet Show was one of the longest running internet series out there, featuring puppet-like characters in silly and goofy scenarios. The episode isn't lost for reasons you may be thinking. In fact, the episode was actually made on the day the attack happened to comfort those affected by it, and viewers specifically being heartwarmed by the episode in question. However, this episode was never available for download, with the creators not feeling the episode was meant for preservation, in spite of it being one of the most positively received episodes in the series. A few other things in the episode, such as interactions from people preferring them to stay private, could have also influenced the episode not being downloadable. In spite of recording software being really unavailable in 2001, it wouldn't have been impossible for somebody to have recorded the episode. However, no recording has surfaced as of yet, and it's speculated whether the creators even have the episode in their possession, considering they did really feel like preserving it. Many fans are left saddened by this episode not being available, since it was a highly proclaimed episode of the series, but it's possible we may never see it resurface. The Moxie Show This was a CGI animated anthology series produced by Hanna-Barbera from 1993 to 1995. In between broadcasts of Cartoon Network shows would be this show, showing Moxie, a dog, along with a flea named, well, Flea who liked to hang out and watch TV with Moxie. Despite ending in 1995, reruns of the show persisted until 2000, when they stopped and the show became lost, since apparently it wasn't very popular or successful with audiences. Although episodes have been recovered and published online, the entire series still hasn't been completely found yet, but it is possible that more episodes could turn up in the future. Weaponless Self-Defense this was the name given to an early BBC television program that aired from 1936 to 1937. Supposedly, the program featured some of the earliest television demonstrations of jiu-jitsu, and were all aired live. Since this was in the 1930s, there were very limited means of recording television, so it's likely that all of the footage of the show is permanently gone. However, the Radio Times does a pretty good job at entailing the specifics of the show, although we'll probably never be able to see any footage of it. Yasuko Endo, In the Distance Yasuko Endo was a model and actress who was set to debut as a singer under the Pony Canyon record label, and her first album was planned to be In the Distance, intended to release in May of 1986. However, on March 29, 1986, Yasuko Endo committed suicide by jumping off of the roof of her Tokyo apartment building. As a result, Pony Canyon canned all releases of the album and seemingly destroyed all copies of the album in their possession. In spite of them destroying all copies in their possession, it's speculated that copies may have survived since promotion for the single was already underway, though any recordings of this album have not yet surfaced, if they do exist. Dead or Alive Fan the Flame Part 2 Recorded in 1992 by a British band Dead or Alive, this album was meant to be a sequel to their prior album, Fan the Flame Part 1. However, for its intended release in 1992, it was ultimately cancelled prior to completion. Nearly 30 years later, the unreleased recordings were finished by producer Craig Hardy, following discussions with Pete Burns and Steve Coy, members of the band, prior to their deaths, alongside the help of Coy's estate. The album saw an actual release in 2021 after it was finished. Nirvana Sings Nirvana You probably know the band Nirvana, a popular grudge band that went on from 1987 to 1994, often cited as one of the most influential bands of all time. However, what some people may not know is that a band in the 60s also named Nirvana also, well, existed. However, in 1985, the members of the 60s band Nirvana actually reformed, and in 1996, they made a cover of the 90s Nirvana song, Lithium. Very little is known about this song, since it's lost of course, 
but also I could only find one discussion about this on Reddit, where I pretty much got all the information from. That's not exactly a good sign that this will ever be found, needless to say. Lord Byron's Memoirs Byron's Memoirs is a series of memoirs by a British poet and politician, George Gordon Byron, written between 1818 and 1821. These memoirs were never published, and were subsequently destroyed when Byron passed away. The contents of the memoirs isn't fully known either, though it's speculated to contain excerpts regarding Byron's life, loves, travels, and opinions. It also is not known why the memoirs were destroyed, leading to a few conspiracy theories regarding why they were even destroyed in the first place. However, it is known who destroyed the memoirs, and although plans were made to initially publish them, the two men with possession of them, John Murray and Thomas Moore, instead decided to destroy it. Whatever the reason for its destruction may be, it's now gone forever, and not a trace of it has been found since. Kraina Grisbo TV, Paradnik Usmiechu 3 Alright, so this one was kind of hard to get information on. However, it appears to be a YouTube channel that has garnered attention from fans trying to figure out what it means. It's also Polish, so I had to rely on Google Translate for whenever I had to find information on this. It seems that the supposed third episode of the series never was published, primarily because of potential disc failure, or at least according to the wiki that is documenting the series. One frame from this episode has been published, and that's all that's available as of now. Recreo Online Recreo Magazine was a monthly Brazilian journal primarily seeking to educate and entertain kids and preteens with all sorts of different things with its service. Recreo Online was the name of its official website, featuring many different things, such as videos, cartoons, jokes, stories, and activities. In recent years, however, the site began to only show the photo of its current issue, which means that much of this content previously on the site is lost. While some material from the site at this time has been recovered, much of it still remains lost today. Hail Honey I'm Home this was a British sitcom made in 1990. You can probably already judge from its name alone, but this show received a lot of negative reception from critics, and is often cited as one of the worst television shows ever made. It featured Adolf Hitler in a parody of a sitcom, living with the Goldsteins, who are portrayed as obnoxious neighbors, and are Jewish. Yeah. As a matter of fact, only its pilot was ever aired before the show was just cancelled altogether. Supposedly, eight episodes were filmed but never released, whilst more were planned to have been filmed. Although a YouTuber supposedly has the master tapes to all eight filmed episodes, I don't think this is one people will be super thrilled to have been found. Additionally, said YouTuber is waiting for a legal permission to release the episodes online, which for a show like this, yeah, good luck. My Little Pony Rainbow Factory This was a My Little Pony horror film that was being developed in 2013 by a small Canadian studio named Spectra Studios. No, this wasn't authorized by Hasbro at all, in case you're wondering, and was entirely made by people outside of the crew behind the actual My Little Pony series. In fact, the movie actually received a cease and desist by Hasbro, hence why it is now lost, but more so just cancelled. The movie actually copied the animation and art of the original series nearly perfectly, supposedly, which was most likely why I received a cease and desist. Though plenty of material has since been released by Spectra Studios, including various storyboards and even some animation of the film, they quickly disbanded after the cease and desist, and even some previously released material of the movie from them has become lost again. So we'll see if we have already discovered that. Six Days in Faluha Six Days in Faluha was a video game intended to take place in Faluha during a real-world six-day battle in November of 2004. The game was meant to include realistic gunplay, AI, and destructive environments. In 2009, their publisher, Konami, had dropped the game, shortly following continuous backlash from media outlets. Atomic Games, the creators behind the game, tried to look for a new publisher, but never found one. Though a very poorly put together multiplayer game using Six Days in Faloha's assets was released by them, Six Days in Faloha has never been released. 
Well, not until recently, that is. Just a few months ago, the game actually did come out, albeit under a new company being Highwire Games. In spite of its very lengthy and rough development session, the game seems to actually be out now, even if it's only in early access. At least we actually have a playable build. Jamie Stewart's Sex Book Jamie Stewart is an American musician who was born in 1978 and who is best known for his role in the experimental rock band Zuzu. Outside of music, however, Stewart supposedly claimed to have written a humorous novel about very, very specific sexual encounters that they had throughout their life. Coined as the Jamie Stewart sex book, it was written by Stewart from 2003 to 2005 and has never been publicly released, with Stewart allegedly only showing it to friends. With that in mind, we'll probably never get to see it, and maybe that's for the best, especially since Stewart said that it was a failed attempt to write a humorous book, so. Allopalesia Between August and September of 2016, a member of the controversial Fat Followers group in Bolivia claimed that he was going to assault a child who was playing Pokemon Go in the city square. Taking advantage of the fact that news press was nearby, he wrote the message Allopalesia as evidence of the event. This incident was reported by Bolivian Newscast where it talked about the assault between the boy and the member of the Fat Followers group. However, there is no record of this news saved, aside from the original photo of the member saying what he was going to do. So far, this is all that we have. OKKO OK Crossover Nexus Original Version OKKO OK is a popular cartoon that aired on Cartoon Network from August 1st, 2017 to September 6th, 2019. In October of 2018, the show made an episode which was a crossover between four different Cartoon Network series, including the titular OKKO OK show. However, while the actual episode has been saved and archived, allegedly there were plans to make an even longer version of the episode. The episode archived is 11 minutes long, but there were ambitions to make the episode roughly twice that length. The 22 minute version of the episode only finished storyboards, and while various storyboards of the original version of the episode have since surfaced, the entire storyboards have not been released yet. Strange Kentucky People Chris Jericho is a professional wrestler, and during a trip in 1994 to compete in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, Chris received a tribute tape to him from a fan, which in actuality contained rather bizarre content, now known as the Strange Kentucky People tape. This tape, which showcased the fan, contained her doing and saying all sorts of weird shit. Though at least it was worth something, since Chris at the tape was more entertaining than his SMW tapes, so. While Chris claimed the tape was found in 2011, with ambitions to upload it to YouTube, it either never got uploaded, or has mysteriously become lost again. Even so, it's possible an avid tape collector might own it, but until then, we won't ever get to see strange Kentucky people. Wow, that sounds really weird out of context. Telewizja Solidarnosc Hijack I probably mispronounced that horribly. On September 14, 1985, in Torin, Poland, a television hijack conducted by a group of astronomers laid out these messages, which said, Enough price increases, lies, and repressions, and it is our duty to boycott the election, along with their logo. Cool. Since then, it's never been seen again. Only a reconstruction from 2007 remains, and that's it. Grand Theft Auto Brotherhood to my knowledge, this entry is referring to this mod called Grand Theft Auto Hood Life that, when downloaded, was really just a virus. I don't know where the Brotherhood came from, but it was likely just a typo. We've already run into quite a few in this iceberg anyways. I couldn't gather much information on the mod itself, considering the only thing about it I could find was a YouTube video in Spanish and with no English subtitles, so fun. I mean, it's literally just a virus anyways, so I don't even know. Kmart CDI Training Game In the 1990s, the Kmart Corporation made a training CDI game for employees working under certain Kmarts. Very little is known about this tape, with the main source of information coming from a former Kmart employee citing their remembrance of the tape. Although efforts have been made to achieve it, it is completely lost to this day, 
and although the main lead of this tape's whereabouts came in in the form of a homeless woman who frequented the inn on Kmart, since Kmart filed for bankruptcy in 2002, there is very little chance we'll get to see this tape, though it would be kinda cool. Nina Unrated Deleted Videos Alright, so Nina Unrated is a model who makes a, uh, let's just say, not very suitable for YouTube stuff. This Nina Unrated person seems to be a pretty controversial figure online too. Apparently she made a video of her having an emotional breakdown and pointing a gun at her boyfriend before she was arrested by a SWAT team. This video, at least, has been deleted, and since there's plural videos on this entry, it's safe to assume this Nina Unrated person probably has other deleted videos of god knows what. Glover 2 Glover is the name of a Nintendo 64, PC, and PlayStation game that was released in 1998 by Interactive Studios. The game follows a glove named Glover, who seeks out to restore the Crystal Kingdom by retrieving crystals that were lost. The Windows and Nintendo 64 versions of the game received positive reviews, while the PlayStation 1 received negative reviews. A sequel was planned but eventually cancelled, probably because the first one wasn't very popular. It was intended to release in mid-1999 and would have supposedly extended the story of the first game that unraveled as the game went on. Supposedly, the game was somewhere around 80-85% to complete before cancellation. Although it was speculated that a ROM of what was finished of Lover 2 was out there, it seems to be lost right now. I Am Rich I Am Rich is an iOS app that was made in 2008. There's nothing really interesting to say about the app itself, but you want to know what is interesting? The fact that this app costs $999. No, I'm not kidding. Apparently, the purpose behind this app was just a joke so that people who bought it, for some goddamn reason, could be proud that they owned it. It gives me those, I've won but at what cost vibes. Oh yeah, and it was also taken down from the app store less than 24 hours after release. Similar apps with lower prices would subsequently release, but the holy grail was, of course, the original I Am Rich, which unsurprisingly is now lost. Funniest thing I found in my research doing this is that out of the 8 people that downloaded this thing, those poor souls, one of them claimed to have accidentally done so. Like, could you imagine being that person, realizing you just threw away $999 of perfectly good money for an app that does literally nothing? I feel like so bad for that guy. Logan Paul in the Suicide Forest PC version. Alright, so this story is very common knowledge online at this point, but on December 31st, 2017, famous YouTuber Logan Paul filmed a vlog of himself in an infamous forest in Japan, known for containing many people having committed suicide. During filming, he stumbled upon an actual hanged corpse, filmed it, and published it to YouTube. It took no time at all for the video to be taken down, and Logan Paul suffered quite a bit in terms of his revenue earning as a result of this whole mess. Without going into too much detail, this whole situation became a really big deal, to the point that it gained headline coverage. This whole incident also was the reason for that dumbass sounding apology video from him that you probably have heard about. Regarding the video itself, it's lost, at least I couldn't find any remains of content online thankfully. I don't know what the entry is referring to by saying PC version though. I could totally be overlooking this one, especially since the story is so massive, so if anybody can clear up if this entry is referring to something outside of what I'm talking about, let me know in the comments, I'll appreciate it. 12 Ounce Mouse Pilot So 12 Ounce Mouse was an adult cartoon that aired on Cartoon Network, and it looked like a 4 year old's fantasy story. It seems to have gained somewhat of a cult following over the years in spite of its low quality. However, in 2021, the editor for 12 Ounce Mouse said that the show had an early pilot that only a few staff members for the show were even aware of. The pilot is entirely lost since nobody bothered to save it, and there's pretty much no chance that this thing is recoverable now. Hell's Kitchen Junior Episodes Hell's Kitchen is a cooking show airing since 2005 about a bunch of chefs witnessing the intense environments given by Gordon Ramsay. I'm kinda hoping I don't have to explain who he is. However, somewhat of an anomaly of the Hell's Kitchen cinematic universe was this chef by the name of Junior, who appeared in a few episodes of the show and just wasn't heard from again. What was especially odd was all other chefs had a deep level of documentation on sites like the Hell's Kitchen wiki, 
except for Junior. It was eventually discovered that Junior was actually disqualified from proceedings, and without going into too much detail, Junior did some things that went against the rules of participating in Hell's Kitchen, specifically towards another chef who was in the show. However, Junior did actually cook a meal before his disqualification, but whatever footage that would have been is now lost, and probably won't ever be publicly released. Playfo the Platformer Playfo the Platformer was a screamer platformer game made on GameMaker Lite 8.1 for Microsoft Windows. Released in 2018, the game has a titular character Playfo going around 7 levels to avoid obstacles. At the end of the 7th level is when a grey face appears on the screen. Although the contents of the game are readily known online, nothing else is known about it, and it is currently unplayable. It is possible that someone with the exe file installed could provide it online, but they probably don't realize it's lost. Regardless, the game is currently not available to play. Whitehall Palace Merle Portrait of Henry VIII In 1537, King Henry VIII employed a painter to make a mural portrait of him, his late father, his mother, and wife. It was proclaimed to be the painter's greatest work ever, with it being the most well-known depiction of King Henry VIII, in spite of it currently being lost. This is because in 1698, in the Whitehall Palace, where the portrait was being stored, a fire was started by accident, and although some of the sketch of the mural has since survived the test of time, the entire complete portrait is entirely lost. Windows 1.0 Byte Build the Windows 1.0 Byte Build was an early demonstration of Microsoft Windows, shown in December of 1983 in Byte Magazine. The demo was built in September of the same year, and was likely shown to members of the press shortly after its compilation. In March of 2022, a photograph of a floppy disk containing the demonstration was posted to Twitter. However, the user has since claimed the disk has been demagnetized to such a degree that it is impossible to recover it. So we'll never get to witness this build. Andre 3000 Solo Album Andre 3000 is an American rapper who has an extensive discography. Of this, he supposedly was going to create a solo album, and although it seemed like there were ambitions of fully producing and releasing one, the artist has come out to say that it isn't happening. It's not entirely clear if there was ever a solo album that was fully finished before this cancellation, but chances are we won't get to see it, especially since he's pretty much refrained from releasing anything of the sorts, if they do exist. Horace the Band, Ghost EP Ghost EP is a 3-track EP made by Horse the Band. This EP saw a very limited release, with only around 250 copies being sold of it in total in May of 2008, and all the unsold copies, as well as the master copy of it, have all been lost. Some people even bought multiple copies of it, since apparently they were being sold at a really cheap price, so it is possible someone still has a copy that they just haven't come out with it publicly yet. The closest we ever got was allegedly an eBay listing showed up, but there don't seem to be any records of any copies of the EP ever being up on eBay, so it could have just as easily have been a hoax. Chilean Independence Act The Act of Independence of Chile, made on January 1st, 1818, was made by the Republic of Chile to declare its independence from the Spanish monarchy, and was approved the following month that same year. The document of this act was kept in 1832 in the Palacio de la Moneda until 1973, when during the coup d'etat, when it was destroyed by a soldier who simply considered it as old paper. Additionally, it was thought that it was burned after a fire that took place in the Palacio de la Moneda after subsequent bombings that took place there hours before. How the actual document was destroyed was after the subsequent fires and bombings in the Palacio de la Manada, the document was recovered and to be transported to the then president's secretary. During this, military asked for the soldiers transporting the document to take off their coats, confiscate the act of independence, and then destroyed it. Since the document was destroyed this way, it is truly lost forever and not recoverable. SCP Necklace of Greed the SCP Foundation is a fictitious foundation documenting various types of anomalies, in which they capture, study, and contain all of these anomalies. 
They can range from objects to creatures and even places. There are a whole plethora of SCPs to read about. It's kind of a whole rabbit hole of its own, but the SCP Foundation itself even has lost media. SCP-048 has a very extensive history, having all sorts of rewrites, with stories ranging from the anomaly being a talking dog, which funnily enough is the only iteration that is available, to a normalizer, which while not much is known about it, this story is said to have been pretty poorly constructed. A Necklace of Greed, which was yet another rewrite for SCP-048, was written on January 30th, 2009, and was deleted shortly after its publication though the name Necklace of Greed stayed on the SCP Foundation's website a few days after its deletion, hence why people are probably more familiar with this one. Considering the short amount of time that the story was probably deleted, it's likely we won't get to see it. Mali Mosque Vogue Fashion Shoot 1996 The Great Mosque of Jene, located nowadays in Mali, is an adobe building and is the largest mud brick building in the world. Its most commonly known event was in 1996, when Vogue magazine held a fashion shoot at the mosque, which captured several pictures of scantily dressed women. This was supposedly endorsed by the magazine, and it ended up outraging local opinion, and since then, non-Muslims have been banned from ever entering the mosque again. Considering this was in a whole other country, and it was possible that the pictures were evoked shortly after publication, if they were ever published to begin with, it's likely we won't ever get to see what they were. Squadron Leader X This is the name of a British World War II film that was made in 1943. The plot goes as follows. A German Luftwaffe pilot is tasked to conduct a false bombing onto Belgium in the hopes that it would convince the local population that it was the English who did it, all while pretending to be a British soldier. However, upon his landing in Belgium, he is helped by members of the Belgium Resistance, who end up smuggling him to Britain alongside other stranded RAF pilots. It received pretty favorable reviews from both the US and the UK when it was released. However, despite its supposedly positive reception, the film was oddly never shown after its initial theatrical run. Though many stills, posters, and even a copy of the exhibitor's campaign book have all survived, the entirety of the film is now completely gone. American Crisis I couldn't find much information on this one. From what few mentions of it on the Lost Media Wiki I did find, it's an NES game that was seemingly made specifically for American video entertainment. No information on this game itself is seemingly available online, and although a Famicom cartridge prototype of the game has allegedly been discovered, it hasn't been dumped as of yet. G-Man Virus The G-Man Virus is a supposed LUA-coded virus that appears in Gary's Mod. It could happen if you end up downloading the wrong add-on or go into an infected server. This G-Man Virus would do things like take over your screen with a map texture, opening tabs randomly with some NSFW content, and a whole bunch of other random shit. Supposedly, the virus would only appear on older versions of Gary's Mod and is now currently lost. However, the actual existence of this virus hasn't even been really confirmed yet, though it's somewhat known on Gary's Mod forums, probably because of the fact that it just fucked your PC up and really dumb things. Recreations of what the virus would have done have been made. There doesn't seem to be a means of finding this virus today. Which, I mean, it's literally a virus. I don't know why people would want to search for this thing. Jamie Kane. This was the name of an ARG that was funded by the BBC. The main part of this ARG was a game in which you unravel and solve the death of the titular character Jamie Kane, who is a fictional pop star in this game. There was a lot that went into this game, including emails and phone calls, which also included many tie-in websites. The ARG itself is now lost, alongside the various emails and phone calls that were sent out for the game. Whether they'll be uncovered is up to debate. Apollo 11 Footage The Apollo 11 landing, in which astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin set foot on the moon, is considered as one of the most monumental moments in human history. Although the actual footage of the landing itself has been preserved, the original SSTV recordings of the entire broadcast of the Apollo 11 event have mysteriously been lost by NASA. Without going into too much detail, 
the footage was most probably wiped for reuse, similar to many TV shows from the 70s and 80s, which means if this is the case, the footage is likely unrecoverable. While there have been valiant attempts to recover any footage of the SSTV broadcast outside of the touchdown, all searchers have come out empty-handed. Osama Bin Laden Animal Crossing saved files. Yeah, so I think this requires a bit of context. Hopefully I shouldn't have to explain who Osama Bin Laden is to you all. However, in 2011, it was discovered that Osama Bin Laden was hiding in a bunker in a town in Pakistan, and the US military ended up killing him. After this was done, it was discovered that there was a hard drive containing all sorts of things, from Osama Bin Laden and the people around him, and it's a whole rabbit hole in of itself. Like just to give you an idea of what's in this thing, Monsters vs Aliens in Arabic subtitles was on this. Anyways, it's since been known that Osama Bin Laden had played Animal Crossing Wild World on an emulator, and this supposedly was also on the hard drive. However, any data relating to this save file has been nigh impossible to retrieve, as it's either missing or pretty much impossible to get for whatever reason. I think this Reddit comment says it best. Out of all things I expected to read with my pair of eyes today, this was not one of them. Rick and Morty Jared Fogel adds, Rick and Morty is a well-known adult animated sitcom that is currently airing on Adult Swim. However, shortly after the series premiered, Justin Roiland, the series creator, was asked by Subway to make a series of commercials featuring the titular characters. In these ads, Rick and Morty say stuff like how they're the new Jared right before promoting Subway. Jared Fogel was the primary spokesperson of Subway when these commercials aired, so that's what the new Jared is referring to in these ads. However, shortly before the commercials were set to air, Jared Fogel was arrested, and right after this happened, Subway cut off all ties with Jared, and the commercials never premiered. The only one who has copies of the commercials is Justin Roiland, and when asked if he could release the ads, he has responded saying that he's not allowed to because of legal threats from Subway, seeing as the main vocal point of the ads is Jared Fogel. There were a total of four Rick and Morty ads aired for Subway, and none of them have ever been made publicly available. Sarai 27 Sarai 27 is a film made by musician Diamond Galles and Italian filmmaker David Pepe. It is supposedly described as an unrelenting portrait of a body suffering torture within the restricted confines of a medical facility, using the original work in addition to further vocal tracks and mixing. This film was released in 2011, and although it has seen some reshowings, has never received any digital or home release, and the film is now partially lost. A 4 minute segment of the movie is up on YouTube, but someone in the comments claiming to be David Pepe saying that Amanda and I worked for 5 years to made that piece and to reach the quality you've been so lucky to experience yourself. Please take this video down immediately. This is a work that needs respect with 6 whole exclamation points. So yeah, one of the creators of the film wanted the video taken down, which I don't think it was ever taken down, but in any case, it is still a lost movie. Bible Black Latino Dub So what is Bible Black? Well, it's a word that starts with H and begins with I that I don't think I'm allowed to say on YouTube, so I'm not going to say it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let's just say it's a very NSFW series that you should be very, very cautious of if you decide to research it for yourself. Anyways, there was a supposed Latin American Spanish dub of the show that was made, but is now lost. Pretty much all of the dub actors for this have tried to disassociate themselves with Bible Black, and there doesn't really seem to be much of a lead on where this thing is, so we'll probably never get to see it. I don't think we're missing out on much though. Tagalog dubs. Alright, so Tagalog dubs, yes it's misspelled on the iceberg, appear to be dubs from the Philippines of various kid shows, and many of these are currently lost. We got dubs of Adventure Time, Camp Lazlo, Codename Kids Next Door, and of course the legendary Handy Manny. Though one or two of these are found, many of these Tagalog dubs from the Philippines are either super rare or just lost altogether. I saw this quote from someone who said, 
basically everything from the Philippines is lost media, and I just feel sentences like that. The Cure for Insomnia, 1987. So The Cure for Insomnia is wild. Ironically released in 87, it is an 87 hour long movie, and that's just crazy enough on its own. But the movie itself is so much weirder. It was made by this guy named John Henry Timmis IV, and is his only film credit. The entire film consists of actor L. D. Groban reading out and I kid you not, a 4,080 page poem, which is also titled The Cure for Insomnia. Funnily enough, this poem in its entirety is also lost. The film was only shown once at the School of the Art and Institute of Chicago, Illinois, and ran from January 31st to February 3rd, 1987. Ed never got any home release, unsurprisingly. It's therefore assumed that all remaining copies of the film are in loss of time. And yeah, going back to that 87 hours, it was actually crowned by the Guinness Book of World Records as the longest movie ever made, in spite of the fact that it's now lost. Goman Torture Master Goman Torture Master is a game, well, actually, I don't know if I can really call it a game. This game was made by the same guy who made Hong Kong 97, which, if you remember the Taiwan 2001 entry of this iceberg, you'll probably remember how I said the game was known as one of the worst games ever made. Well, this game is seemingly just as bad, if not worse than that. Just a whole bunch of random crap thrown together for the sake of being offensive. At least Hong Kong 97 had gameplay, this just has nothing. Just a mess of imagery slapped together. While I don't recommend it, you can find and play a copy of this on the Internet Archive. Reason why this is probably on the iceberg is likely because it was lost for some time, but it seems to have been found since, which, you know, just awesome. Of course, this of all things is found on the iceberg. Madonna's Sex Book Unreleased Photos In 1992, American entertainer Madonna wrote a coffee table book literally just called Sex. The book features pictures including softcore sex along with simulations of other sexual acts. The book received negative reviews upon its release, though readers seem to be a bit more positive in reviews as of today. Although I couldn't find much info about any unreleased photos that were planned to have been included in the book, I would imagine there were probably some photos that were likely removed before the book's release. In October of 2023, Madonna would actually make an auction featuring several photos from the book, and this could include some photos that weren't included in it. The Apprentice Deleted Outtakes The Apprentice was a reality show that ran from 2004 to 2015, hosted by a former US President Donald Trump. In October of 2016, a month before the 2016 presidential election, audio recordings taken from 2005 of Trump making lewd comments to Access Hollywood host Billy Bush were leaked online. Afterwards, claims of similar comments by him in certain outtakes of The Apprentice were also made. Some cast members also came forward to back up these claims, saying that Trump had also said various slurs and insults in these outtakes. No footage of them has ever been released, and although copies have been confirmed to exist, Mark Burnett, the show's producer, has threatened legal action against anyone who attempts to leak them online. Whether any footage will ever be released is anyone's guess. Though I think it's safe to say that this is probably one that won't be publicly available anytime soon. WRZuda.pl This was the name of a file sharing website that existed in Poland from 2006 to 2017. It was primarily used in 2006 to 2007, though it saw usage before its eventual closure. Supposedly, the creators of the site often ran into legal trouble considering some of the content on the site was copyrighted. Mainly users would sometimes upload entire feature-length films onto the site, which actually ushered the publishers to disable the ability to add videos to the site a few years before it went offline. When the website was terminated in 2017, the site unveiled a message saying for users to download all files from the site before its termination. Ultimately, while a lot of its content remains found and saved, it is inevitable that some of the content on the site is lost to time, possibly with no way to recover it. Zeuxis Paintings Zeuxis was an artist from 5th century BC, primarily having been a painter. Although his paintings were very well known and the introduction of various techniques by the painter, 
None of his work is known to survive today. The exact loss of each of his works is unknown, but they can be attributed to a few common factors that occur as time goes on, such as fires and just the painting becoming desolate with age. Therefore, it's highly unlikely any of his work will ever see the light of day. Hey Hey Monica Danish Version Hey Hey Monica is a song made in 2004 and was made noteworthy for its simplicity and repetitive nature. In fact, the title of the song was repeated 55 times throughout the song's duration. That has to be a Guinness World Record or something. Anyways, the song had a Danish version of it that was made, but it allegedly only sold 10 copies, at least according to a 2020 interview. Considering it only sold 10 copies, and it wasn't really a hit in Danish, it probably won't be found soon. Why Lie Lie Original Lyrics Lie 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 was a song made by artist Serge Tonkian for his debut solo album Elect the Dead. Though the song in its entirety is readily available online, according to him, the song originally had far more serious lyrics to it, rather than the more silly ones that were used for the song's actual release. Though these lyrics are confirmed to exist, it's never been said what they depict, and it's likely we'll never get to hear them, unless Serge Tonkian somehow remembers them, which is highly unlikely. Not only was the song released over 15 years ago, but the amount of times the lyrics had to be changed ranged around 5 separate times, so it's highly unlikely they would be remembered by him. Sonichu Unreleased Issues You probably already know who Chris Chan is, a very controversial figure online who was arrested recently following having committed incest on their mother. It's really fucked up, you can go research Christian on your own, but I'm not here to talk about Christian. Instead, Christian has developed a very long running series known as Sonichu, and it's pretty much become a punchy bag on the internet. However, Christian would seemingly stop making these comics after the 17th issue was released, but it's since been discovered that Christian could possibly have a whole plethora of unreleased issues. In fact, Christian may have as many as up to 65 unknown comics in storage. Now, is there a way to confirm the existence of each of these comics? Nah, not really. But it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for Christian, of all people, to have so much of this kind of content in storage. Whether or not we'll get to see them is up to debate, though. Reynoldsham Forest Incident Documents The Reynoldsham Forest is located in Suffolk, England. And in December of 1980, a bunch of UFO sightings were supposedly sighted at the forest. Now known as the Reynoldsham Forest Incident, it's actually become known as one of the most sensational and best documented set of UFO sightings in the world. Now, I couldn't find any real information about documents that were lost. I mean, it's possible that the government would have withdrawn some of the information about these sightings or some of the information in the documents, and that's what the entry is referring to, but I don't know. Let me know in the description if there are some known documents of this out there that are legitimately lost. The Thomas and Friends Institute of Innovation this was an informational short film made by Studio Hansa from 2013 to 2014. The short was commissioned by HIT Entertainment, the copyright holders at the time of Thomas the Tank Engine, to pitch and promote the Thomas and Friends brand to potential commissioners and merchandising partners all over the world. While snippets of this short film have been officially uploaded online, the creators of the film are legally not allowed to share anything else online since the film is highly confidential and clearly only meant for those intended to see it. Though it is 100% possible that a goofy goober could just capture it secretly and then just leak it to like 4chan or something. Not that I'm suggesting it, but lost media has been found in strange ways before, so yeah. Alright, now that we're in tier 6, it's time to start talking about some of the weird shit. And starting us off, is the Saddam Hussein gay sex tape. So Saddam Hussein was the dictator of Iraq from 1979 to 2003. In April of 2003, the US, along with the help of NATO support, invaded Iraq and overthrew Saddam Hussein. However, before this operation, it was allegedly reported that the CIA created a fake gay sex tape featuring an actor who had a similar appearance to Saddam Hussein, along with another actor who resembled a teenager, have sex for an undetermined amount of time. If this tape did exist, 
the two actors wouldn't have actually had sex, merely mimicking the act. However, the reason for its supposed creation was to discredit Saddam's credibility and to spread the tape around Iraq to further discredit the dictator and to use the laws of homosexuality at the time against him. It is unknown if this tape was actually made, and if it was, it would have been made sometime in 2003, before the operation that overthrew Saddam Hussein. Considering its nature, and the fact that it's been nearly 20 years since it's apparently been made, there's a good chance that if it does exist, it's long gone. Alright, hopefully you guys like that entry, because next up, we have the Suicarno sex tape. <laughs> Uh, Soekarno was the first president of Indonesia in 1960, and was tried to be overthrown by the CIA because of his alleged closeness to the Soviet Union. Although the Soviet Union attempted to get Soekarno to their side various times, they failed each and every time. As a result, the Soviet Union created false pornographic tapes featuring Soekarno with the plan to show the tapes to the Indonesians and start a revolution against Soekarno. However, when he was confronted about these tapes by the Russians, he watched them and was surprisingly pleased by them, even going so far as to ask for additional copies for him to show to his country. But then, what happens next? Well, the CIA decides to make a pornographic film of their own to, ta <laughs> of their own to also tarnish Soekarno's image. After this film was shown to the Indonesians, the reaction that the CIA got was not at all what they were expecting. The Indonesians laughed and mocked the CIA for the film, and unironically actually garnered somewhat of a positive response. Now, does this thing exist? I mean, who really knows? But there is evidence to suggest it does. If it does, though, it's lost, since the CIA's film went unreleased pretty much everywhere else and it's unknown where the Soviets' copies of the films went, so yeah. But seriously, like, why were the Soviets and the CIA so obsessed with making sex tapes of this guy? Okay, let's get back to something maybe just a little more normal. Bowl of Heaven 267. Bowl of Heaven is an experimental noise or drone band that began in 2007. They have released over 500 albums and pieces, with some currently being lost. The most intriguing track being 267. One of the band's members, Clayton Count, allegedly messed up the audio so badly that it was impossible to restore, making it pretty much corrupted. Essentially, the music in its original form has been completely lost, and there's very little chance it'll be found, since supposedly not even Clayton could restore the audio to its original form after tampering with it. Deep Star 4000 Audio Deep Star 4000 was a US Navy submarine built in 1965. The submarine ventured at least a couple hundred times underwater, with that count being even more depending on who you ask, with it being able to take three crew members to water levels as deep as 4,000 feet, hence the name Deep Star 4000. In 1966, during a sink using the Deep Star 4000, the two crew members allegedly found a gigantic cryptid fish estimated to have been around 25 to 40 feet in length, a length equivalent to some of the largest living fish ever. Though accounts of this sighting have been saved, the crew members also claimed that their reaction to the fish was recorded on the submersible's audio log. However, this audio recording has since been lost, and it's unknown if it'll ever be recovered. Operation Climax Audios Operation Climax was the name given to a set of isolated experiments associated with the MKUltra project conducted by the CIA. If you don't know what MKUltra is, in the 70s, the CIA experimented with hallucinogenic drugs with the purpose to conceive mind control. Operation Climax was somewhat similar to this, and supposedly audio recordings of Operation Climax exist somewhere. However, there is probably no chance these are ever getting found, considering it's literally tied to MKUltra, plus it was 50 years ago, so it could just as easily be lost to time. Zarna Wolga Zarna Wolga, also known as Black Wolga, is a supposed 1973 film that was based off of the Soviet Union urban legend of the same name. The urban legend went like this. It was believed that members of the KGB, the Committee for State Security of the Soviet Union, would kidnap children and trap them in a Black Wolga car, where they would do things like blood transfusions and organ transplants on the kids. 
Although it was speculated that the film did in fact exist and was banned in Poland after its release due to protests of the movie using an actual Black Volga, we now know they never existed in the first place. The film was never mentioned in any Polish articles when it was in production and during its supposed release. As controversial as a film this was, it would have garnered some news outlets to comment about it, but they don't exist, so neither does the film. Hugo Chavez, Canciones de Siempre Hugo Chavez was the president of Venezuela until 2007. In May of 1999, Chavez would host a radio show called Hello President. The radio show was controversial, since much of it was political, and it's since been claimed that Chavez even directed military orders live on the air. In 2007, Chavez would perform a compilation of regional songs from Venezuela and Mexican rancheras. Although this was all heard on the air, it is currently unknown how many songs were even in the compilation. And yeah, it's a loss. It's unknown if the album was ever released to the public, since at least one CD was made of the performances Chavez made, as evident by a photo of him holding the CD cover. It is also unknown if only he has a copy of the CD in his possession, so there's a good chance this one is lost for good. Charles Manson Completion Charles Manson is a name you've probably heard of before. He is known as the former cult leader of the Manson family cult who died in prison in 2017. Without going into the rabbit hole of Charles Manson and the Manson family cult here, in 1984, while he was incarcerated in San Quentin State Prison for his role in the 1969 murders of Sharon Tate and Rosemary LeBianca, Manson wrote letters back and forth with Black Flag frontman Henry Rollins, and a letter from one of Manson's lawyers proclaimed that he had made some acoustic recordings with the name of the album being titled Completion. Rollins agreed to produce the album for release in 1984. However, since it was made by Charles fucking Manson, the public was outraged, and another member of Black Flag even reported receiving death threats because of the news. The album was ultimately cancelled, and will probably never be released. Two out of the five records are in the possession of Henry Rollins, and the other three were likely owned by Manson himself until his death in 2017. The whereabouts of the other three are currently unknown. SCP Containment Breach in Dev Version A video game based off of the popular SCP Containment Breach rabbit hole, also called SCP Containment Breach, was made and released on April 14, 2012. Prior to its release, various in-dev versions were made, but are currently missing. The developer of the game, Regulus, has stated that they no longer have any of the in-dev builds, so they're all completely lost. Before the initial release of the game, Regulus had released various screenshots and videos showing off the in-depth builds of the game, which showed various differences to what was released. Since Regulus no longer has the builds in their possession, they're likely gone for good. Pokemon The Sydney Pirate Ship Show In September of 2000, a Pokemon show in Sydney happened. This show was a pirate ship show and supposedly was actually pretty big. However, in spite of how large the event was, no footage of the event has ever been put online. In fact, the only mention of its existence comes from Spanish and Italian magazines which provide photos, but not much else. A Spanish photo briefly gives some details of the event, but that's about all we know of this event, and it's unknown if anyone ever took footage of this event when it happened. If not, then non-Sydney Pokemon fans will never get to see this. The Red Tape I think this entry is referring to the Blood Red Tape of Charity, since I couldn't find any entry that was just titled The Red Tape Online. This was a 1913 propaganda film featuring Edwin August as a gentleman thief attempting to help a family who has fallen under hard times because of inability to receive proper aid because of the organization's red tape regulations. The movie, although its plot is fully known, is completely lost. How or when it became lost is unknown, and any surviving copies of the film were probably destroyed by Universal in 1948, along with other pieces of film. Only some advertisements for the film, along with a single surviving still of the movie, are all that we have. Iron Maiden at Cardent Horses Recording Iron Maiden formed on Christmas Day in 1975, and after many rehearsals, on May 1st, 1976, the band performed at St. Nick's Hall in Poplar before doing regular gigs in the Cardin Horses pub. 
In 2018, a 30-second recording was uploaded to YouTube, featuring 11 seconds of a recording at Carnet Horses. There is little to no information on this recording online, and although there was an eBay auction which supposedly held the recording, it has since been unlisted. The uploader behind the video even proclaimed that the total recording time was around 18 minutes in length. Even in the video itself, which is only audio, it said the video was cut due to YouTube's copyright system. Finally, any attempt to contact the eBay auctioneer has turned up empty-handed, since apparently they attempted to auction the recording twice, with no bids both times. If this recording is proven to be real, it would be the earliest recording of Iron Maiden, as well as the only recording of its kind to feature the band's original formation. However, until then, its existence has not yet been confirmed. Kurt Cobain Organized Confusion In December of 1982, Kurt Cobain would make his first ever demo. Using nothing more than his aunt's bass, his guitar, and a set of wooden spoons along with his mother's suitcase to emulate drums, he recorded a series of tracks for a demo titled Organized Confusion. The song supposedly sounded similar to early Nirvana, with distorted guitars, heavy bass, and low vocals mixed with what could be described as blood-curdling screams. Cool. The song itself was not publicly heard until 1998, when part of it was played in a documentary about Kurt and his widow, Courtney Love. Courtney, however, threatened legal action if the song was played in the documentary, and thus only a few seconds of it is heard in the documentary itself. Although there were rumors that the master tapes of this demo were destroyed, this is probably just a hoax. However, someone by the name of Chris Wood claimed to have been in possession of a tape which he believes holds a demo to it. Though the recording date of the tape is later than the reported recording date of the demo, being December of 1982, while the tape Chris Wood has is from 1984, some people do think it's legit. Despite that, the tape hasn't been fully released to the public, and it's unknown if Chris is still in possession of the tape today, since he apparently tried to sell it through the Cobain's estate, but they turned his offer down. Uh, this. The Melancholy of Hatushi Mona, which is the entry translated to English, is a screamer video that was posted sometime between 2000 to 2002 by an unknown user. The video is a low quality sort of story, maybe which is interrupted by a zombie face with crooked teeth accompanied by a high-pitched scream. Although you can find the video online, the original photo of the zombie face at the end apparently hasn't been discovered. I find it odd how the entry doesn't describe the photo being lost and acts like the video itself is lost, but no, you can find it on YouTube in Nico Nico. Maybe the original video is lost, perhaps this original video had the OG image at the end, who knows. Legends of the Hidden Temple Pit of Despair Incident Legends of the Hidden Temple was a Nickelodeon game show which has since been proclaimed as one of the best the network has ever made. Although no episodes of the show that have aired have ever gone missing, there is apparently one episode that never aired at all. According to Kirk Fogg on the web show The Garage Show, he recounted a female contestant on the show who was throwing a meltdown in, ironically, the Pit of Despair. As the cameras were all rolling, she apparently began to vomit everywhere, which ushered all recording to abruptly cease so that the team could clean up the mess and we recorded another take. The season, episode, and team name was never specified, and not much is known about the unaired episode past that. What footage was left after recording was likely confiscated, and there's probably no chance that this will ever see the light of day. But come on, you gotta admit it's funny as fuck that she was having a fit in the area of the show called the Pit of Despair. Secret Gospel of Mark The Gospel of Mark is one of the Gospels featured in the Bible. However, it's rumored that an extended version of the Gospel of Mark was once written. Seemingly discovered in 1958, a man named Morton Smith discovered an unknown letter written by Clement of Alexandria, sent to a man named Theodore who asked if an alternate version of the Gospel of Mark existed, to which Clement confirmed it. For a while, it was believed that only Smith had seen this text, though it's likely some other scholars had seen it after its initial discovery. After some complications with the book that contained the supposed secret gospel, the pages mysteriously went missing, and all attempts to find them were unsuccessful. What happened to the pages is unknown though it's possible that they were stolen and destroyed because of Smith's homoerotic interpretation of the text. 
Even to this day, it's unknown if there really is a secret gospel, and if there is, we'll probably never see it. Nick. This is the name given to a lost Argentinian TV channel that was created by Pramer, which also created other channels like Magic Kids for Argentina. Despite the similar names, this channel has nothing to do with Nickelodeon, even though it supposedly ran shows that were on Nickelodeon at the time. It ran from 1994 to 1996, then disappeared. Although there were videos online of the channel's logo appearing during episodes of the shows, all videos seem to have either been removed or privated. Aside from that, there is pretty much nothing else known about this channel or what it aired. All that we have is an image of its logo, and that's it. Pokemon Snap Station VHS Tapes Pokemon Snap Stations was a Nintendo marketing campaign in which owners of the games Pokemon Snap and Pokemon Stadium could take their games in and use the station to print out 16 stickers featuring photos they had taken. The project was introduced in 1999, lasted for around a year, and these stations could mainly be found in blockbusters in North America. However, blockbusters apparently owned tech support tapes for these stations that told them how to set the machines up. In 2005, a user on a thread mentioned that they had two tapes in their possession and was willing to sell it to whoever was interested. However, it doesn't look like this ever happened, and although efforts recently were invigorated to try and obtain these tapes, it doesn't appear that they were ever acquired. An eBay listing popped up in around 2021, but it doesn't seem anybody ever bought it, and the eBay listing is no longer available. Fallout 3 Gnomes ARG Images Gnomes are objects, utilities, I don't know, in Fallout 3, and something strange pertaining to these gnomes in game happened in around 2012. In 2012, there was a post about this guy who was getting stalked by gnomes in Fallout 3, and eventually it gets worse in game, where he'd see gnomes in places where they would pretty much never appear, and he even provided pictures of these. Soon, the guy starts getting weird and cryptic messages and videos sent to him by users with names that people found were connected to the gnomes in Fallout 3. Eventually, the dude goes on Reddit and says that he feels like there's a presence in his real life world now that feels like gnomes and is the ARG about the gnomes slowly taking over this dude's life. Now, obviously this isn't real, it was an ARG that was set up and everything, but the photos of the gnomes appearing in the game that were provided are lost. Some have been found, but not all of them, so that's what this entry is referring to. Erolina Martinez Accidental Shooting Erolina Martinez was a TikToker, and she and a group of friends were filming a fake kidnapping video where one of the members was holding a real gun, and while this video was recording, Erolina Martinez was accidentally shot and killed, and everyone else fled the scene right after that. The most common hypothesis people have is that the person who was holding the gun didn't realize it was loaded and accidentally pulled the trigger, which caused Erolina Martinez to be accidentally shot. Now, obviously, I could go on about just how stupid it was to film something like this, with real guns especially, but frankly, that isn't in my avenue to discuss. The footage showing Erolina Martinez's death is now lost, but some of the footage of the video before the shooting is publicly available online, but cuts before Martinez's death. The Castle in the Sky Alternate Ending Castle in the Sky is the name of a 1986 Japanese animated movie, and the film is so iconic that it is said to air annually ever since 1988. Sometime in 2007, images of the film popped up on Nixie, a Japanese social media network, and the images posted looked different than what people had seen for the movie, though it was clearly meant to be from it. This led hardcore fans to believe an alternate ending of the movie actually existed at one point, so they went out to search for it. After thorough search efforts, with pretty much no actual leads made, many people began to go about saying they had seen the alternate ending, although they probably hadn't, and apparently this actually got so bad that Studio Ghibli, the studio that made the film, actually had to debunk all of these rumors about the alternate ending of the movie, so if the people behind the movie's production themselves debunked these rumors, there's a good chance that the ending doesn't exist. Even then, the images posted may not be faked or anything. They could be things like concept art or a pilot reel that was shown, which is a pretty common practice in the Japanese animation industry, or just earlier shots of the film itself. Either way, I'm going under the notation that an alternate ending of this film doesn't exist. 
Half Elf Tentacle Assault DS. What the fuck? Yeah, so this is a DS game that is about what you're probably thinking it's about. It was supposed to launch in late 2008, but distribution was cancelled right before its opening. Since this was obviously not licensed by Nintendo, the company behind this game had to go through extra measures to try to distribute it, to a point where they literally would have to go through somewhat illegal means to actually distribute this game. Which was actually why it was cancelled, and yeah, it's lost, and hopefully it stays that way. Purple Yoshi Demo In August of 2000, an image appeared on IGN's website. IGN is a video game website that mainly posts stuff pertaining to game news and stuff like that, and it was meant to be an image from a longer tech demo for then-upcoming Game Boy Advance. The image was of a Yoshi from the Mario series, as a bright purple color along with other visual differences. The origin of this demo has never been found, so it's unknown if this image is actually of a real demo or not. Although efforts have been made to try and identify the demo this image came from, there's been no luck thus far. Seriously, dude, I'm gay. This was an unaired reality TV series that was supposed to air on Fox. It was meant to premiere as a two hour long special in June of 2004. But right before its premiere, the show received heavy backlash from LGBTQ plus groups and has since never been aired at all. The show was allegedly about two straight men who competed against each other to see who could live a life as a gay man, and the man classified as gay would win $50,000. An LGBTQ plus organization named GLAAD watched the pilot in advance and were not happy about it. The two guys who competed in this pilot described the experience as being trapped in gay hell, and if you say something like that to an LGBTQ plus organization, what do you think their reaction is gonna be? So yeah, the pilot was never aired, and nothing else of the show was ever shown either. Considering the insane amount of controversy the show got, there is no chance it'll ever get aired. Wikipedia Hello World page Wikipedia is a website that needs no introduction. It was formed on January 15, 2001, and although the earliest recorded edit of the site was said to be This is the New Wikipedia, under a page created known as Homepage, co-founder Jimmy Wales has actually claimed the first ever edit was actually made by him, where he made the text Hello World. Then it was instantly deleted. Although there is actually recorded proof of the former edit, there is no evidence that this edit was made, meaning its existence has not yet been confirmed. Some people speculated Jimmy's claim on the matter, and even more so, he apparently began selling NFTs off of his supposed first edit, and that alone already made me go out the opinion that it doesn't exist. You could have had me on your side, man, but you just had to sell NFTs. Like, come on. Uh, this again, translated in English as I Killed You, this is the name of an album made by... Okay, I'm not pronouncing that, but it was an obscure Japanese rock EP that was seemingly lost for some time, but is actually recently been found. Originally, the audio was only available on VK, which is a Russian social media website, but someone has since downloaded the music and uploaded it to YouTube. Now it's available for anyone to watch, so if you're somebody who's into math rock, go check it out. I'll make sure to leave it in the description. Well, you know, granted that I don't forget like a dum-dum. Nikola Tesla's Files Nikola Tesla was an inventor who lived from 1856 to 1943. Prior to his death in 1943, he claimed to have had around 80 trunks that were all details of his work, however, very few of them have actually been found. As to where the rest of them are, there's pretty much no lead on where the rest could have gone. In 2018, History Channel actually made a dramatized documentary series called The Tesla Files, in which a team of investigators attempt to find whatever they can that's currently lost from Nikola Tesla's archives. It ran for five episodes, but it technically pertains to the entry. Plus, I thought it was interesting to bring up. 112 Dirtbag Alright, so this one requires a bit of a backstory going on. Mara Murray was a woman who went missing in 2004. She went missing after her car crashed on Route 112 near Woodsville, New Hampshire, and prior to her disappearance, a few strange occurrences around Mara Murray's life were occurring, like her calling her professors the week before she disappeared, saying she was taking a week off because she experienced a loss in the family, even though her family did not experience any losses around that time. At the car accident scene, a local motorist stopped and attempted to help Mara Murray, to which she refused, and that motorist went out to notify emergency services. 
but by the time they got back, Mara Murray was gone. And that's the last time anyone has seen her. Now let's talk about a channel called 112 Dirtbag. This guy named Jeffrey Alden Olsen began making videos on the 112 Dirtbag channel starting on February of 2011, with the most prominent being a video titled Happy Anniversary, which was uploaded on the day of Mara Moray's disappearance. Combined with the fact that 112 is the route Mara Moray crashed on, being in the name 112 Dirtbag, as well as Mara Moray's parent, claiming people around her life to be dirtbags as well, caused people to think that this guy was responsible for Mara Moray's disappearance. However, it just turned out that this guy was a troll and was just looking for attention around the Mara Moray incident, and he was just kind of crazy in general. While the happy anniversary video has since been deleted, it's been uploaded to death by other YouTubers. However, some of 112 Dirtbag's other videos are nowhere to be found. While some have been archived, there are more that exist that simply haven't been discovered. The Andrew Show, a show for white kids. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, this show is awful. With a title like that, you just know that the show in question is just gonna be horrendous. So this show was an internet show running from 2009 to 2011, talking about right-wing politics and white supremacist beliefs. Also apparently, the kid in the show, Andrew, yeah, his grandfather is Thomas Robb, and if you don't know who he is, he's the current leader of the KKK. Awesome. Sadly, 4 episodes out of 21 of the show have been found, and you can find them online if you search episodes up on YouTube. However, if you do decide you want to listen to contents from The Andrew Show, a show for white kids, it talks about some very disturbing subject matter, so please, watch whatever was found of the show at your own risk. For the rest of us, though... Toy Story 2 Ultimate Toy Box Costco DVD Manufacturing Error Pixar's Toy Story is pretty much revolutionary at this point, I don't think that's gotta be said. Toy Story sequel, Toy Story 2, got a special edition called the Ultimate Toy Box Edition, and a brief controversy happened when these got shipped out to Costco. Apparently, a Costco shipped out around 1,000 copies worth of these sets, which contained an error where halfway through the movie, it cut to an R-rated movie called High Fidelity, which contained multiple uses of the F-word. Costco then had to recall all of these copies after they received complaints, obviously. But, I don't know, I just find this kind of funny. Oh, yeah, and it's also lost. Self-portrait. Okay, you all know the Beatles. The Beatles doesn't need to be introduced, and there is plenty of Beatles lost media. However, what's the first thing you come up with when it comes to Beatles lost media? Is it Carnival of Light? The Long and Winding Road? Hmm. What about a 40 minute long film which solely features a slow down clip of John Lennon's semi erect penis? No? Not what you were thinking of? Well, I hate to break it to you, but this thing exists. And yes, this was filmed by Yoko Ono, surprising no one. It was screened in the Contemporary Art of London once, then never seen again since. Yoko Ono also wanted to film the reactions of the audience members, but it was never recorded. Since its initial screening, nobody has seen it, and will probably never see it. Though if I'm being honest with you guys, Yoko Ono probably has it. I can guarantee you she has it somewhere. Kaiser. Kaiser is a 1917 short Brazilian animation, noteworthy for being the first true Brazilian animation ever. Though many very short animations were made in Brazil before 1917, this one is special because of its narrative having a clear beginning, middle, and end, being the first of its kind in Brazil. The film features Emperor William II of Germany sitting in front of a terrestrial globe, and he puts a military helmet onto the globe, proclaiming that he ruled the world then the globe swallowed him. It was a critique on German expansionism amid tensions of World War I. The film premiered at Cinepathy and has since become completely lost. One frame of the short film has survived, and that's all we have. Jedrich Radwanski, 1839 photograph. Okay, guys, I promise, I'm really trying with these pronunciations. He was a physicist and a chemist who was born in 1800 and passed away in 1860. In 1839, he made the first daguerreotypes, a type of early photo, of the visits to the church and the cousin Mary's place. However, these photos are now lost, and their whereabouts are seemingly unknown. Supposedly, he mainly teached physics, but was paralyzed in 1842, rendering him unable to teach anymore, and then passed away in 1860. It didn't seem like he did much with the photos that he had after they were taken in 1839, at least from the research I saw. 
If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Blowfly girl blog and photos. Okay, so content warning cuz some of the entries on this last tier are really foul. The blowfly girl is this person who documented her paraphilia online, which is a sexual desire for something that is often seen as unnatural by most standards, and in specific, she had a paraphilia for maggots. And she posted blogs and pictures about this paraphilia online. Many of these posts were, of course, hidden behind adult content warnings, and even sometimes just outright deleted by admins of the site she had posted this stuff on. Nowadays, her blog and all the photos alongside it are completely lost. According to her, in 2009, her account got terminated around the same time she lost her job, and all archives of her blog were on her old computer. Considering they haven't seen the light in over 10 years, we're probably not gonna get to see any of them. Even if some of it is partially found, I'm I'm not gonna be searching for this stuff. Like, I mean, fucking paraphilia for maggots, are you kidding me? Blair Witch Kidnapping The Blair Witch Project is a 1999 found footage movie that has since garnered a large amount of recognition. Found footage movies weren't really that big until the Blair Witch Project happened, and it's since become a very large medium in movies in of itself, and Blair Witch is primarily the reason for that. In 2003, a group of teenagers from Flint, Michigan filmed themselves kidnapping a girl and taking her to the woods. The film showed the teenagers blindfolding her and putting her in a shallow grave, amongst other things, before they let her go. The teenagers claimed to have done this as a sort of Blair Witch fan project, and the tapes hadn't been seen for a long time. Recently though, the full tapes have been actually entirely found and are available online. So is this whole thing staged, or was it real? Well, that whole story is an entire rabbit hole in of itself, with the girl who was seemingly kidnapped being theorized on whether she was truly in on the act or not. If you want to know more about this topic, I suggest you go watch Blame It On George's video on the subject, because he outlines the story pretty well in full in my opinion. Yucatan Tape So from the information I could gather, a guy by the name of Lauren Coleman documented in his book that he saw a recording of a pterodactyl or a giant burr that supposedly happened in Yucatan in 1977. I couldn't find any other information on this entry online, aside from the explanation that was given by the creator of the iceberg. This recording of a pterodactyl or a large bird hasn't been recovered and has since become lost. There probably isn't any way that this thing would be able to be found again, if it even exists. Uh, this uncut version. The entry is in Russian, but translated it says Green Elephant. This is the name of a 1999 art house film made by Russian Svetlana Paskana. When this film was released, it ran for 86 minutes, but rumors spread it up about there being a much longer version of the movie, exceeding a length of 2 hours. The existence of this extended version hasn't been concretely confirmed, but a frame of an unknown scene from the film has supposedly been found having been taken from the director's social media. What's weird is that Svetlana Paskana, the person who directed the movie, says that an extended version doesn't exist, even though there are various other networks that do say an extended version probably does exist. Additionally, Paskana has a lengthy history of strange and unusual behavior and characteristics. She's known for sort of contradicting herself and others and kind of other goofy stuff as well. Still, though, nobody knows if an extended version of this movie even exists, and if it does, where it could possibly be. Five Starkle Men Five Starkle Men were an electronic noise group from the 1990s, whose music consisted of heavily edited distortion and samples. The band was pretty out there. After one of the two members of the band committed suicide in 1997, the other member decided to become a professor, and so the band kinda just ended there. The Five Starkle Men Band has very little documentation. Most of the information you'll find about them is through blogs and a very brief mention in one article. However, there are actually two digital compilations containing songs from Five Starkle Men, alongside an unofficial bootleg tape of Five Starkle Men that are now online, 
and although quite a number of their songs are found and can be downloaded on archive.org, there are still some songs from them that are lost. But this is one where I think if enough people look hard enough and really try to use their resources to find the remaining few songs, we might just be able to find the rest. Yanlu Unreleased Songs Yanlu was a Brazilian singer who, in my opinion, had a very tragic backstory. Yanlu became very depressed upon entering his teenage years, and by the time he turned 16, he began developing very heavy suicidal thoughts. This all came to a head when in July of 2006, Yanlu actually did commit suicide. Although since Yanlu's death, many of his songs have since released, even many releasing internationally outside of Brazil, it's been confirmed that many songs still remain unreleased on Yanlu's hard drive. Whether they'll ever see the light of day is unknown. The Secret Film What is The Secret Film? Well, The Secret Film is the name of this film made by an infamous shock artist known as John Duncan. John Duncan is perhaps most known for his album titled Blind Date, in which he commits acts of necrophilia for musical intentions. The movie, The Secret Film, was allegedly screened only eight different times to eight different dudes who all had to sign a confidentiality sheet to see it. The studio this movie was screened in was also burned by Duncan himself. Considering the measures went to ensure nothing of this film was made publicly available, and knowing Duncan's previous history, the film is probably pretty terrible. And it's highly unlikely something like this is ever going to just turn up online. And that was the Lost Media Iceberg. Hope you guys liked that one. I figured Lost Media and Icebergs in one video would make for a pretty nice combination for a video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe and do all that cool stuff. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.